Hi, this is Joe Maciars from A-Tutoring Enterprises. The uh, last video I did, we talked about uh, quadratic equations, and I suggested that uh, the A, the H, and the K in the vertex form of the quadratic equation uh, was very similar to the absolute value equations, and I was going to show you that, and, well, that this is that video. So let's go take a look at our graphing calculator and uh, check out what these parameters do. Uh, to start with, I'm going to start by defining the three variables. We're going to define a to be 1. Uh, let's go ahead and just make h and k also 1. So h is equal to 1, and a new equation, k is equal to 1. All right, so there's our three parameters. You can tell the parameters by the little green equals signs there. And uh, we're going to put together an equation now, y equals a times, oops, we want the absolute value here. We got too used to doing a quadratic equation. Actually, let's put a little space there. Uh, absolute value of x minus h in there. You can see the absolute values really well. And then we're going to add the k to it. All right, let's hit return and see what happens. Well, there we go. We've got an absolute value equation. It's a v-shape. It has a vertex right here. Notice the vertex is located at 1, 1, okay? And uh, we've also got a equal to 1. So in essence, this is the standard uh, absolute value equation. If we were to type in y equals just the absolute value of x, it's the same thing except it's been shifted over 1 and up 1. And that's what the H and the K are going to be all about. We'll take a closer look at that later on. Let me go ahead and just turn that off, though. The, the point of that was that that had the same exact shape as this one does. Okay. All right, well, let's go see what the various parameters do. We're going to animate them one at a time and see what they're all about. All right. So let me move this down a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, well, that looks pretty good. We're going to go from negative 4 to 4, and we're going to go by 81 steps. And we're going to hit OK. And now let's play it and see what happens. OK, so we can see that as A is going up, basically the, the V shape is getting narrower, just like it did with the parabolas. And now as A is coming down, we can see it's opening up and widening up. Eventually, it's going to go to a straight line, and that would occur at a equals 0. When a is negative, it's going to open downward. And when a is a very big absolute value number, for example, negative 4, we take the absolute value of that 4, it's again narrow. So anything over 1, usually the boundary that I look at is 1. If a in absolute value is greater than 1, it's going to be narrower than standard. If it's between 0 and 1, then it's going to be wider than standard. And if it's 1, of course, it's going to be standard. All right. So this is what A does. It simply will uh, decide whether it opens up or down based on the sign. And the number will tell you basically how wide it is compared to when A is 1, which I'm considering standard. All right. And that's exactly the same behavior that we had for the quadratic equation. So not a huge surprise. Let's go ahead and animate the parameter h. And uh, we're going to go ahead and change this to negative 4 to 4 again. And we're just going to play it and see what happens. Uh, now remember, the formula has x minus h in it. h is 1 right now, and that's moved it to the right. So it's a little bit opposite of what you would expect. This would be 1 times the absolute value of x minus 1, uh, plus 1. So the x minus 1 kind of leads you to think it, well, maybe it should be over here on the left side, but it's not. It's on the right side. All right, let's play it and we'll see what's going on. So now we're decreasing. There we were at 0, so that put us on the y-axis. And now with an h being negative, uh, we're on the left-hand side. But remember, when h is negative and you put that value in there, you're going to get x plus something. So again, in terms of having numbers in there, it's exactly the opposite of what you would expect. Okay. And there's h being positive. And we can see that it's not going up or down, it's just moving left and right. This is very clear that h just is responsible for moving things left and right. 
All right. Enough of that. Let's go ahead and look at what happens when we play with k. We're going to animate that parameter. And let's go ahead and make that negative 4 again and make that 4. And we'll keep the 81 steps and see what happens. k is starting out at 1. And we play it, and it's going to start coming down, and so does the absolute value. <clears throat> Notice that the shape stays the same. Uh, the slope on either side is actually a measure of what A is. A is 1 right now, so the slope stays 1 or negative 1, depending upon which side of the V shape you're looking at. When K was negative, we were below the Y axis with the vertex, and now when K is positive, the vertex is above the Y axis. And so, just like with the parabola, k moves things up and down exactly like you would expect. All right, let's go ahead and just pause this, or stop this. And uh, I'm going to turn this off, and I just want to type in one, well, maybe a couple equations just to get us uh, a feel of what's going on. See if you can guess what this is going to look like. So we're going to have y equals the, uh, is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus, let's pick out 3, and we'll say plus 4. Okay, can you guess where the vertex is going to be? Well, we got a couple of choices, right? It could be at 3, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, maybe it's going to be at negative 3, positive 4. Maybe it's going to be at positive 3, negative 4, or positive 3, sorry, negative 3, negative 4. So those are our four choices. It's clearly this is going to be related to the x, this is going to be related to the y. Where is it going to go? Well, we're just going to hit return and find out. Well, there it is. Remember, this negative sign is kind of misleading. It actually is the opposite of what you see here, so it ends up at 3 and then up 4. This one's not opposite of what it looks like. It's exactly what you see. So we would go positive 3, positive 4. Uh, notice the subtle difference between this graph and a graph where we had y equals the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. Oops, plus 4. Notice here I'm making a1 effectively, whereas over here a was 2. So we're going to take a quick look at a, and you can see the subtle difference. This is the one with a equal 2. This is the one with a equal 1. And just for fun, let's go ahead and type in y equals one-half of, guess what, the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. And that's going to be wider than our standard. So this middle one over here, this one was our standard shape. The 2 tells us that it's narrower than normal. The one-half... <clears throat> is uh, wider than normal. And if we were to suddenly stick a negative in front of there, well, basically that's just going to flip it over the x-axis. And there it is. In fact, we can do that to all of them. And let's change that one. Let's put a little space there. And there they all. All are going down now. Okay? All right, so that's how the vertex equation for uh, the absolute value works. It's very, very similar to the quadratic equation. Uh, it makes it very easy then to start to remember this form because it shows up again and again. And we're going to see other forms like this when we look at, for example, circles or ellipses or hyperbolas or, uh, well, I guess parabolas are part of that conic section uh, part. Those are all conic sec sections I just mentioned. But this will also work in things like sine and cosine and tangent and on and on and on. Uh, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something. Uh, let's get over to the final screens. Uh, this was uh, a little discussion about absolute value equations. We were examining the vertex form and specifically what A, H, and K did when we changed them. Uh, this has been A Tutoring Enterprises. My name is Joe Maciars. My website is at www.tutent.com. My email is at tutent uh, at nebraska, N-E-B, 
www.rr.com and uh, you can call me at 402-421-3536. I do uh, local tutoring for the uh, people in Lincoln, Nebraska and I also do online tutoring for the rest of the country and the rest of the world. So if you need some help in your math or your physics or your chemistry, uh, give me a call and uh, we'll set something up and uh, give you a hand on Skype. If you found this uh, video useful, uh, just consider it Shareware for the Brain and uh, please donate a dollar or two to my PayPal account, which is at 210 uh, at neb.rr.com. And um, if you liked it but didn't really find it particularly useful to you, feel free to like the video itself on the uh, little like button. If there's anything you'd like me to see me do uh, specifically in terms of graphing things out or hopefully later on we're going to get in front of the camera myself and uh, give you a chance to uh, uh, ask some questions there, um, go ahead and leave it in the comment sections down below and I'll uh, hopefully get to it as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching and uh, hope you uh, learned something. Thank you.